Welcome back. We are Joanne and Larry Mars with more tips on nature photography. Photography is all about the light. In this episode, we will tell you how to control the light to your best advantage. We are in Arizona where the light is dramatic and beautiful. Outdoor photographs and landscapes in particular require good light. It is all about the time of day. Take a look at this photo taken close to the middle of the day. There aren't very many shadows and it appears flat and colorless. The ideal time for landscape photography is when the shadows get long. We try to get out early in the morning and again in the late afternoon as the sun is getting low. The light is warmer and the shadows help define details. During these magic hours, your photos will really pop. The midday sun is not conducive to landscapes, but we can still take photos. A reflector or some form of sunshade can help. Instead of large landscapes, we can focus in on close-up subjects and diffuse the light somewhat. Just casting a shadow will soften the light and give you a more pleasing image. In the middle of the day, we look for large features that cast their own shadows, such as these huge boulders. This was a good spot for a portrait. Larry's in the shadow of the boulder, but a soft, warm glow from the reflected sun illuminates his face. Another way we control the light coming into our camera is through the use of filters. A circular polarizer can make a dramatic difference, especially with blue skies. As you spin the filter around, you can see the difference in the sky. It becomes darker and more blue. However, it is possible to take the effect too far and your sky can become almost black, as in this example. The solution is simply to spin the filter back a little to lessen the effect for a more natural looking photograph. A polarizing filter does more than just darken skies. We use it to saturate other colors within the scene and it can also reduce reflections off of objects such as shiny foliage or water. Areas in your photographs that are too bright, such as this sky, can use some help from filters as well. A graduated neutral density filter can darken that sky for you. Slid down in front of the lens doesn't change the colors, but just darkens the portion of the image that you choose, resulting in a much more pleasing image. As we reach the end of the day, magic hour is upon us. We have to take into consideration the lower levels of light. Shadows will become black and difficult to photograph, and where the sun goes down will be very bright in comparison. In this case, I have chosen to set my exposure for the bright sky and sun, letting the cactus fall into dramatic silhouette. Got my fill of uh, this view. Now we'll see what's behind me. Sometimes one is very pleasantly surprised. What I'm presented with is a very dark scene but there are ways that I can compensate. Lowering my shutter speed to let in more light is first and foremost. I can also raise the ISO to make the camera more sensitive. With a slow shutter, higher ISO, and the tripod for stability, the camera can practically see in the dark. Like magic, a mystical scene appears in the photographs. Colors take on an interesting hue from the glow of the sunset sky. As it gets even darker, we might need a little help to get an exposure. This is where fill flash comes in handy. We can use a remotely mounted flash or even the one built into the camera to bring out the details when there isn't enough light. As you see, it's all about light. Learning to control the light will make your images come to life. Join us again for another session on nature photography.